Um, so basically, yeah, we know that uh, when, when we do research in uh, in vascular aging in animal models, um, the animal models uh, to really age in in the vasculature, it takes a long time, two to three years. Uh, sometimes we even see more. Um, but it's something that um, is very awkward uh, in this kind of uh, research. Basically, yeah, you have to wait for a very long time until you have results. And um, it's um, almost impossible to do any intervention. It's priceless. And uh, if you are at all able uh, to... Uh, to get finance uh, for it, uh, if it fails, uh, it's it's of course a, a three or four year waste of time. So uh, we were looking for a way um, uh, to cope with that. So that was uh, one reason why we started to to work on uh, on other aging models. And the second reason is why we started to um, uh, look for um, uh, aging models is that of course. Vascular aging is now uh, seen as more in a, a phenomenological uh, way. We see vascular stiffness, uh, we see higher blood pressure, perhaps some remodeling, and then we look at what um, kind of molecules could be changing, which is a very valid uh, approach that has worked. But we wanted to have a new uh, uh, take on that and look uh, more to the cause of aging itself and how that would affect the, um, uh, the vascular function. And one of the main causes of, uh, uh, of uh, aging is uh, DNA uh, uh, damage. And I think many of you are already aware of, uh, of that. Let me see whether I can get the next uh, slide. Um, I will throw to uh, go um, uh, through the first slide. Uh, it's not so uh, very important. These are all things you know. Huh? Basically, you are all aware that um, uh, the intrinsic vascular aging process, which is not atherosclerosis, but more functional uh, and structural remodeling that is not uh, occlusive, uh, can contribute um, to the main, the big main diseases in, in the body. So I, apologies to, to interrupt you, but uh, I cannot see the slides changing. Uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, let's I see it also on my phone that it doesn't change. That is weird. Escape. Now they are changing. Yes. Now yes. Yeah. So I'll have to uh, work with this uh, view. No, now I, I can see a different slide. I think now yeah, it's working. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, so basically, uh, this is the next slide also, uh, just demonstrating that if you take away um, uh, uh, all the risk factors like dyslipidemia, etc., and smoking, uh, the main causes of, um, of uh, occlusive, uh, so atherogenic uh, disease, uh, you get um, neurocognitive disorder and um, Alzheimer's disease as a prominent uh, cause uh, of death within uh, the population. And that's already at, at super high uh, age. And this is really uh, caused then by, by uh, as we believe, by the um, endogenous uh, natural um, vascular aging, a process that yeah, basically we don't know yet exactly whether we can um, um, uh, stop that or influence that or, or how we should uh, do that. And well, we've just seen the, um, the reviews coming up on this uh, uh, topic. Um, let me see. So um, we took it from another entrance and uh, we looked at the main cause of uh, aging. Uh, and one of those main causes is uh, believed to be DNA damage. And I think you were all aware of these typical um, uh, progeria um, uh, syndromes, which are for 80, 85% caused by um, uh, problems in DNA uh, uh, repair. And basically what we did is we have taken models that uh, phenocopy uh, this kind of accelerated aging uh, syndromes. Um, and aging, uh, uh, we should see it as um, 
as as an adaptive um, response, basically, if if we put it in the framework of DNA damage, uh, basically your DNA gets damaged, and what the body is doing is it tries to um, uh, roll an adapted protective gene program, um, a so-called survival response. Uh, which is centered around the metabolic adaptation to prevent further genomic um, damage and also to prevent proliferation of the uh, genetically compromised cells. So you get phenomena uh, like uh, activation of, of uh, cell cycle inhibitors like P16, P21, changes in uh, nutrient sensing programs by FOXO, sirtuins. Um, activation of antioxidants to prevent further uh, problem and um, also, let me see whether I can hide this, um, attenuation of, um, of growth uh, factors. But this, uh, all these adaptations um, basically uh, causes um, a block also of repair responses and that ultimately as we believe, leads to aging. And um, so we've, we've been looking in models where we have um, undermined several different, um, several different uh, DNA repair pathways. And one of the models is our mice, where we have knocked out ERCC1, which plays a role in, uh, in various uh, repair uh, mechanisms. So you block a number of um, repair processes in uh, in uh, the body. And indeed, if you look at these uh, mice, you see that they have a short, not only a short lifespan, uh, this is the whole body um, um, partial knockout called the delta minus. So it says one minus an allele and one functionally uh, uh, cripple allele. And uh, you see that they live shorter. They have cachexia. They have uh, neurodegenerative uh, processes that uh, at some points also resemble um, uh, dementia. They have osteoporosis and et cetera, et cetera. And I have looked in the, um, in the past to vascular aging uh, features. And indeed, they, they copy a lot of the human um, non-atherosclerotic uh, vascular aging uh, features like the increase of blood pressure, worsened vasodilatation, worsened constriction, um, which is also present normally in uh, uh, humans. And normally the balance is still that the dilatation decreases more than the vasoconstriction. So netto, you have more vasoconstriction. Uh, leakage of the endothelium, elastin breaks, um, increased vascular stiffness, uh, some diffuse intimal thickening, which is more like arteriosclerosis. We see inflammation, but it's uh, basically uh, uh, an increase of cytokines, um, increased superoxide, and we also see uh, an, an uh, increase of osteogenic uh, tran uh, transcripts, so the calcifying um, uh, genes that uh, that go up. So there's a whole um, phenotyping has been going on now for uh, six or seven years, and this is what we uh, found in these um, uh, mice. Um, and as far as I know, to get this all in a in a normal wild type mouse, uh, you would have to wait uh, for for um, three three and a half years. Um, before you're at uh, at this uh, this moment, which is uh, quite um, quite a long uh, a long time, but you can also observe such features in a in a in a wild type mouse. Um, we've now been busy for some years also making um, uh, smooth cell specific and endothelial cell specific uh, knockouts. You can see that here for the smooth muscle uh, illustrated, and it's of course based on the a well-known Crelox uh, system, so we can do that as well with um, uh, with uh, with the endothelial cell. For that reason, we use a type two Cre promoter or the CDH five Cre, and um, we've also been using uh, uh, an adipocyte knockout uh, model, 
Uh, not too much because um, uh, <laughs> you're quite busy already with this model, but you actually would also be able to get rid selectively of the PVAT, of the perivascular uh, arterial um, uh, fat with this um, uh, method. So there are different options. And if you would compare these uh, uh, different models, oh, come on. If you compare these different um, models, you can see basically uh, when you look at the features in the endothelial cell, specific aging model and the smooth muscle aging model, and you add them up, you uh, come into uh, the same phenotype uh, um, of the whole bod body uh, uh, knockout. So basically there are features um, uh, of the endothelial cell aging and smooth muscle aging that add up. And apparently you can induce everything locally, uh, all these aging features you can induce locally by local DNA uh, repair defect in the vascular uh, wall. So it's something that can actually take place entirely locally. Um, well, these are some organ bath uh, experiments where we could see, for instance, a massive loss of nitric oxide um, uh, uh, signaling. This is then, uh, um, if I'm correct, from the endothelial cell uh, knockout model. But we can uh, play around with, with all these kind of experiments and see exactly what is going on with the signaling if we let either the endothelial cell or the smooth muscle um, age. And our first papers have been um, um, uh, produced and um, also published, so you can uh, look at, uh, at them to get a little bit more into detail. Um, let's now go to the part where we uh, use these models for intervention, because that's why we started um, uh, with uh, as one of the main uh, reasons. Um, so basically we discovered that when we let these um, uh, animals age fast in the vascular wall, that um, if we look at vasomotor function, the response to nitric oxide, PDE1 as a cyclic GMP uh, metabolizing enzyme is taking over from PDE5. So in young mice, we found PDE5 to um, be responsible for regulation of cyclic GMP mediated vasodilation. And in the aged uh, model, we find that it's uh, a PDE1. And um, there have been also human studies, but only in atherosclerotic plaque, where you can indeed also see that PDE1 is emerging in um, plaque and the uh, plaque vascular smooth muscle cells. So um, uh, our clues, and we've did, done this in the whole body and also the smooth muscle model, is that PDE1 becomes prominent when you have an aged um, uh, blood vessel. So we started to um, then treat these animals with um, PDE1 inhibitor and also with PDE5 inhibitor. And for the PDE5 uh, inhibitor, I can be quite short. Uh, we use sildenafil, which is... Um, a um, mixed PDE5, PDE1 uh, inhibitor um, with a lower um, efficacy on PDE1. And we saw hardly any reaction uh, uh, to that in an aging model. But when we used ET14, which has now been registered as len uh, risperdon for preclinical uh, studies, we saw uh, that there was a massive improvement uh, after chronic treatment of vascular function. And um, also we found some uh, uh, improvement um, in, um, in uh, renal tissue. That has not been uh, published yet, but that will come uh, soon, uh, uh, we hope. But this here is just, uh, here you can see um, on this slide how um, the response to S2 go line is down compared to wild type uh, animals and how um, lead risperdon is uh, improving this. And this um, has been um, uh, all published in JPET in 2021. It just illustrates um, how we can uh, use this model. 
uh, this was uh, a matter of um, uh, giving the animal the drug from week 12 uh, until uh, the fourth month uh, of age. And that was enough to uh, study these differences. In a, norm, in a normal uh, wild type mouse, this would take two and a half years uh, to, uh, to conduct. So this was very convenient. And we've done a number of, uh, of other things in the cyclic GMP uh, signaling. Um, uh, well, we looked at a number of things um, also with the uh, PDE1, like, um, I see this is in your way. I'm afraid that I cannot remove it. But uh, basically what we saw uh, is that it was also attenuating uh, a number of um, uh, inflammatory markers and also um, uh, senescence uh, markers. So um, by increasing cyclic GMP with PDE1 inhibitor, you can take away senescence uh, partly and also partly inflammation, um, which was a nice result, especially because, um, and these are the senescence markers, by the way, uh, cert uh, uh, certainly because PDE1 inhibitor is now being tested clinically. And um, so translation would be feasible uh, um, in uh, not too much uh, time, we hope. Um, we've done similar things with SGC uh, activator, and um, we saw basically the same um, uh, results in the vascular tissue, so uh, improvement of vasodilation. We saw um, less senescence. We saw less uh, inflammation. We saw a thinner wall, so less arteriosclerosis. And um, uh, this um, STC activation also prolonged even the survival rate of, oops, of these animals. Sorry for that. Uh, and that you see here. So this is the normal animal, which is dying quite soon. And here you see the survival of the wild type and the treated um, uh, accelerated aging uh, mouse. And basically what we saw is that the gene pattern uh, that was caused, um, change what that was caused by this SGC activator looked like caloric restriction. And probably you are all aware that um, caloric restriction is the most powerful anti-aging um, uh, um, intervention in, uh, in existence. So, um, and these are these uh, uh, gene patterns that, uh, that, that we have uh, looked at, at, at least the sub-selection of the most uh, important uh, ones. Um, so we are now at the phase that we are also going to study the consequences of the other end organs. So we will be looking at uh, cardiac function, at renal function, and we know that uh, these uh, models have a cardiorenal um, uh, phenotype. Uh, we will also be looking at um, at uh, neurocognitive function and the whole body knockout has this, these uh, dementia-like uh, features. And we will see uh, what, for instance, PD-1 inhibition and what SGC activation could do uh, to the uh, end organs in these um, model. And basically, we're looking a little bit like uh, to the multi-morbidity multi that is associated with, for instance, increased vascular stiffness and increased uh, blood pressure at uh, old age. Um, we're also looking at other treatments. Uh, for instance, we're looking at a bioenergetic um, um, uh, interventions with mitochondrial respiration improving drugs and having the, um, um, we've seen some beneficial effects uh, there. We are also looking at uh, blockade of um, uh, inflammatory uh, processes. We've started now with colchicine as an um, anti-inflammatory agent. And what is very nice to see there and uh, striking is that it mainly acts on vascular stiffness and not on vasodilator uh, dysfunction. Uh, also there it has uh, uh, an effect, but it's uh, the, the strongest effect is on vascular stiffness. 
whereas our cyclic GMP and nitric oxide compounds work, act more on uh, vasomotor function and hardly on vascular stiffness. So it seems that these two treatments um, uh, uh, could be uh, combined to have a, a full effect. Uh, let's see whether I have any other things. Well, I think that basically summarizes um, uh, what we have until now and what is uh, possible with these uh, with these uh, models.